Welcome back to our World Cup Control Center in Mexico City. It is halftime in the showdown for first place in Group E between West Germany and Denmark. Over the past four days, we've chronicled the history of the Mundial, its top players and top teams. But there's one group of individuals we haven't talked about yet, the referees. a World Cup soccer referee carries enormous responsibility. His decisions can often make the difference between victory and defeat, and whether or not the game gets out of hand. The referee must control the physical nature of the game and protect its star players. If he doesn't, the field can turn into a war zone. To maintain order, he comes equipped with yellow and red cards, which he hands out for a variety of offenses, but never with the total agreement of the players involved. officials. Many are former players, but all must keep in prime shape to carry out the rigors of the job. They will run almost as far as the players during the course of a game, so conditioning is important. And for these referees, the pressure is great. As senior officials of FIFA, they're called upon to referee all over the world. So to stay in shape sometimes means running on Copacabana Beach or in the streets of Liverpool. Most officials know a month ahead what games they will be assigned to, but in Brazil it's a different story. This official knows just a week in advance. And he's not allowed to referee in his hometown of Rio. So he may travel up to 2,000 miles a week throughout Brazil. It's the Brazilian Soccer Federation's way of controlling any corruption within the sport. Brazilian officials are well known. In fact, they're treated by fans and press as if they were star players. Crowds are actually higher when this official is in town to referee, and he gets a share of the gate receipt. Sir Stanley Roots invented the diagonal system of officiating a universally accepted plan to ensure that a referee and his two linesmen are able to cover the field and be in the right place at the right time. It's a system employed in World Cup 86. What makes a World Cup referee? Experience, fitness, perfect knowledge of the rules. But like any other sport, quick and fair judgment. And like any other sport, their decisions are usually correct. And the officials have been particularly busy at World Cup 86, handing out red and yellow cards at a near record pace. The Labatt TV series returns in a moment. A penalty kick goal by Jesper Olsen in the 43rd minute has Denmark ahead of West Germany 1-0 after 45 minutes in Monterey and uh, Denmark trying to become the second team to go 3-0 through the first round of the competition. Brazil did just that yesterday with their victory over Northern Ireland. And the Brazilians got off to a good start when Miller crossed the ball to Correca. And in the 16th minute, Brazil had a 1-0 lead. Miller's cross the key here right through a defender's legs to Correca, who makes no mistake. 1-0 
for the Brazilian. And then Junior teams up on a nice play here. Breaks in Pat Jennings of Northern Ireland. The 41-year-old keeper makes the save and holds the score at one to nothing until this goal by Josimar, perhaps the best shot of the tournament so far. What a great right foot just underneath the crossbar and Josimar rightly celebrates a great goal as you see it again, giving Brazil a two to nothing lead in the first half. Second half action now. And back come the Brazilians again. Zico on the field, great back heel. That's Sereca, his second goal of the game, third of the tournament. And it was 3-0 for Brazil as we take another look. Zico on in the second half with that great pass. 3-0, the final score as Brazil eliminates Northern Ireland. Meantime, at Tecnologico Stadium in Monterey, it was Spain against Algeria. And Spain early in the going. Francisco to Salinas to Calderay. And Calderay opens the scoring for Spain. Spain needing a win to nail down second place in the group. And they make no mistake about it on the afternoon. Second half, they beat the offside trap. This is Aloy with Calderoy. And Calderoy catches up, scoring his second goal of the game and of the tournament, giving Spain a 2 to nothing lead. And this was as easy a goal as Calderoy will ever score. And then later in the second half, they beat the offside trap once again, and Aloy will take this one himself. And the right footer goes in. And Spain defeats Algeria 3 to nothing as Eloy caps quite an afternoon for the Spanish team. And with that loss, Algeria also eliminated from further play. So let's take a look at the draw for round number two. Argentina will play either Scotland or Uruguay. The Scots must win this afternoon, and they are tied with Uruguay. If the game remains tied, Uruguay will play Argentina in round two. England will meet Paraguay. Now, the winner of today's game, or if Denmark can salvage a tie, will play Spain. So Denmark looking like they will play Spain in round two. The Soviet Union will meet Belgium. Also in the second draw, Brazil will go up against Poland. It will be Italy against France in perhaps the most intriguing matchup of round number two. Morocco will play the team that finishes second in Group E. And unless Germany can come back to beat Denmark, that will be West Germany. Mexico will finish against Bulgaria in round number two. World Cup 86 on CBC Sports returns in a moment. The Danish team was uncharacteristically cocky going into this game. One of their players predicted they would win 2 to nothing over West Germany. Other players said that the Germans had been dodging them for 15 years, and today they take advantage of their opportunities. Well, it was a close first half, and remember, the Germans have that great ability to come back, but right now, Denmark with a one to nothing lead, and they had the best scoring opportunity early. John Siva back in, and that was just knocked away by Forster at the, at the last moment. Then it's Lurby with a chance from well out, and Schumacher has to make a great save off of Soren Lurby. But at the other end, Germany had their chances as well. Here's Alok moving in, and Hoy with a great save as he replaces Rasmussen in the Danish goal. This one beat Hoy, but didn't go in. Andreas Bremer moves in, and that shot right off the crossbar. Both ball there for Denmark. Germany had its share of chances. This is Bowler in, right on goal, but Hoy... The backup keeper looking very strong in his World Cup debut. Then Morton Olsen taken down in the 43rd minute. Penalty kick awarded. Jesper Olsen very casually puts it into the back of the net. And Denmark has the 1-0 lead after 45 minutes. Another look at the goal. Schumacher gets to the left. And Olsen made no mistake as he put it into the back of the net. So it's Denmark leading West Germany. One to nothing in a game that uh, Tony Waiters, we really were looking forward to, and I thought it provided us with some great moments in the first half. Real good moments. Interesting just seeing the penalty at the end. Uh, very well taken by, by Olsen, casually put away, but Schumacher once again moved before the ball was kicked. I think that's going to be a very big feature in this World Cup because there's sudden death in the second round, and all the way through, penalties are going to be a very key factor in the, in the, in the World Cup. Goalkeeping is always a key factor, too, and uh, I think uh, as we watched the first two games for Denmark, we wondered about their goaltending. Rasmussen didn't seem to be very uh, very confident back there. They've made the change, and it looks like it's paid off. I thought uh, Hoy did very, very well. There is a problem, I think, in Denmark in that uh, most of the players play outside of Denmark, and uh, I, I think I'm right in saying the goalkeepers have not got uh, away from, from the Danish league and therefore not getting the experience that uh, the rest of the outfield team do. Rasmussen, I think, looked very uncertain. Hoy has done terrifically well. I think uh, very, very sharp, although 
He obviously misjudged that great shot from Bremer after 30 minutes. Uh, he must have missed it altogether because it seemed to go almost through his hands and hit the bar. But that's the only mistake he's made, and he's allowed to do one of those uh, in, in this particular game for his uh, first debut. OK, Tony, we look forward to the second half. Denmark leading West Germany 1-0. The Labatt TV Series returns in a moment.